A good day to all of you. This is Leeds International School, Grade 9, English Literature, First Term. Today we are going to discuss the short story, The Lumber Room by H. H. Munro, who is also known as Saki. So now let's proceed with The Lumber Room. All, let us focus on the objectives of this video. Reading the content in the short story while analyzing through the characters and incidents. Learn about the great author Hector Hugh Munro. To have an understanding about the following components in the short story, the characters, the plot of the short story, the themes and the techniques. So these are the objectives that we will be focusing in this particular video. Now, let's see what this video has got for you all and for and to improve your knowledge. The content. What is a short story about the author, the characters, what is a lumber room? Then we have as the fifth one, the plot of the short story. Under that, there are four themes. The exposition, the complication, the climax, and finally, the resolution. Then we have the character Nicholas, then the aunt's character, then character comparison, literary techniques, themes, and then questions. So this is the content and this is the list of uh, things that we'll be discussing in this particular video. Now, let's proceed to our first slide, that is, what is a short story? Now, my dear children, this is your first short story for the term, for the year. So, I have thought of giving you an introduction of a short story. So, what is known as a short story? Now, I have given some definitions which are being found about a short story. A short story is a piece of fictional writing, usually less than 5,000 words, that contains these basic elements. Now, we can find in a, a fictional writing. It's a short story, a fictional writing, which consists less than 5,000 words. And also, they contain these basic elements, the characters. But if we consider the characters, the characters are very limited. Then the setting. Setting means the place and the time duration and the background of the society that this story is happening is considered as the setting of the short story. And normally in a short story we have limited characters and most probably only one setting. Then there's the plot. Plot means the story that is happening in the short story. Then the conflict, the issue, the uh, conflict that is in between the characters. Then the resolution. Resolution means the final conclusion or the final result of the actions of the characters. Then we have the climax. Climax means the turning point, the turning point of a short story. Then we have dialogues. Dialogues are also used in between a short story like using direct speech. Then we have a protagonist and also an antagonist. Now, Pute, who is the protagonist? A protagonist means a person who is the main character. He is the leading role. Then the antagonist means the opposite character or the enemy. The person who is opposing the protagonist. And also a short story we can tell. A brief fictional work that usually contains one major conflict and at least one character. So at least there should be one character in the short story and uh, if we consider it as a whole, it, they have only very less characters. A short story consists of less characters, most probably one setting, one plot, one main conflict and one main climax and a protagonist and an antagonist. So these are the basic things that you should know about uh, before you learn a short story. So this is the answer for the question. What is a short story? Now, let's move on to know about the author Hector Hugh Munro. Now, we have come to a place where we will be learning about the author who wrote this particular short story, The Lumber Room. His actual name is Hector Hugh Munro or we tell as H.H. H. Munro. 
was born on 18th of December 1870 and he died on 13th of November 1960. He was born in Burma but he died in France. So, uh, but he was he's considered as a British person because his, his background, his family background is Britain. He was bet better known by the pen name Saki. So, when he wrote uh, stories, when he wrote short stories, when he wrote fictional writing, he used the name called Saki, not H. H. Munro. He was a British writer whose witty and mischievous stories satirized society and culture. That means he used to mock at the people using very witty language. He is considered a master of the short story. Monroe was mostly raised by his aunts with severe punishments and strict rules. These bad childhood memories made him to write his stories based on such incidents. Now what actually happened was Monroe was uh, not uh, raised by his parents but was by his aunts. So these aunts were very strict and they had severe punishments uh, given to Monroe. So due to these things uh, the adult world became a very uh, severe uh, issue to Monroe's mind. So that is why in many of his short stories, if you can read his short stories, please go through them. Then you will see how he has mostly used some uh, witty and mischievous kids to highlight the faults in the adult world or the faults in the adults and the way that they punish the children. So, these things are also highlighted in this particular short story also. So, you will see it is because due to his bad memories that he had during his childhood. Okay, so that is about the author H. H. Munro or who is known as Saki. In this slide, you can see the picture of H. H. Munro or Saki and also I have given four of his most uh, popular stories or fictions that is written by Saki. Beasts, Beasts and Super Beasts, then the Chronicles of Clovis by Saki, then the Lumber Room that we are doing today and the other one is the Complete Short Stories of Saki. So if you have free time, please go through these books, please go through these fictions, then you will understand how witty and mischievous words and mischievous language and characters are used by Saki in order to bring out his bad memories that he had during his childhood. So now it's time for us to introduce or in, uh, to know about the characters who are there in our short story, The Lumber Room. Now let's move on to that. As I told earlier, a short story consists of very limited characters. So here also we have a very few characters and that also two characters are only playing a major role. Other characters, they are not very much important in the short story. But here I have named, uh, listed all the characters who are there in the short story, The Lumber Room. The main character or the protagonist of the short story is Nicholas, who is a young boy. And his picture is also given in this particular slide. Then also another, the other main character is the aunt. Now if Nicholas is the protagonist, the aunt happens to be the antagonist or the enemy who is facing against the protagonist in the short story. So aunt's picture is also given. Then we have another three uh, kids in this house, Bobby, the boy cousin and the girl cousin. Bobby happens to be the younger brother of Nicholas. And there's another unnamed characters, boy cousin and girl cousin. And also you can see how uh, Saki has been witty enough not to name, uh, not to give a name to the aunt. Just the word, the aunt is there, right? The aunt does not have a name. So it also shows the aunt's in insignificance in this particular story. Though aunt is playing a major role, her name is not depicted. So it shows that her character is not a significant character for the reader. But the word the aunt is given and she is acting like the antagonist. And also we find a kitchen maid at the end of the short story. So these are the only characters that we can find in the short story. Nicholas and the aunt are being the main characters. Now let us consider about the topic of this short story. The lumber room. Now you might think what is a lumber room? A lumber room means 
a storeroom which consists of extra furniture and also old yet valuable things stored in this lumber room. And also those things are not used in day to day life are being stored in this lumber room and that is why they are stored because they are not being used in the day to day life. And also normally lumber room is uh, covered with dust and spider cobwebs as one uh, no one is paying much attention to the things in uh, which are stored inside the lumber room. So we see a lumber room consists of old and valuable things and also uh, some old and extra furniture they are being stored there. But no one is uh, going in that and no one is uh, using those things that is why they are kept inside the lumber room. And uh, it is covered with dust and the cobwebs. So now you, I think you have a picture of a lumber room. Now it's time for us to check on the plot of the short story. Now let's focus on the plot of the story. Earlier also when we were discussing what is a short story, I mentioned that the plot means the story that is happening inside the short story. So the plot consists of four different parts. The first one is the exposition. The exposition in the exposition part what happens is it exposes the incidents and the characters who are there in the short story. Then the complication. In the complication part we get to know about the conflict among the characters. What is the conflict that is building up among the introduced characters. Then the climax. After the exposition and complication the climax is coming. It means the turning point of the story. That means the peak point of the story. Then the resolution. That means the final result or the conclusion of the short story. So these under these four parts the next four slides will be presented and it will be discussing about what is the exposition, the complication, the climax and the resolution that we can find in the short story The Lumber Room. The exposition. Now we, in this part we will see how the characters and how the incident is being introduced to us. Nicholas gets into disgrace with his aunt. So his cousins are to be taken to Jack Burrick Sands that afternoon and he has to stay home. The aunt was absolutely sure that the boy will get into the gooseberry garden which is forbidden to the kids. So the aunt warns and orders Nicholas not to enter to the garden. Now what happened is we see how Nicholas is being left out in the house and the other kids are taken to Jack Burrick because Nicholas has done something wrong. So the wrong thing you will see that he has been put, he has put a frog inside his bowl of milk which made the aunt angry. And also you will see that uh, the aunt is very sure that Nicholas was uh, very keen to go into this gooseberry garden. It is like a forbidden uh, kingdom. A forbidden kingdom from for the kids and also aunt has kept a watch near the gooseberry garden and warns Nicholas not to go inside the garden. So that is the exposition of the short story the lumber room. Complication. Now this is the conflict of the short story. Now while the aunt was uh, looking and keeping her eye on the gooseberry garden thinking that anytime Nicholas will go into the gooseberry garden, Nicholas gets into the lumber room, a storehouse of unimagined treasure. Now he uh, might not know about the uh, value of the lumber room but he wanted to anyway in, enter into the lumber room. So that is what he did during this particular day. Every single item brings life and imagination to Nicholas and is symbolic of what the adults the in the world, real world lacks. The tapestry awakens his imagination to a great extent. Now he is looking at a tapestry that contains a, a deer and some wolves and also some dogs and a huntsman. The pots and candlesticks stire up his creative mind and lastly a large square book full of pictures of birds. Now these things are very much value to him. He sees the value of these things. The book which contains the pictures of birds, then the candlestick, the duck uh, looking like ducks, then the pots, the tapestry, all, all these things makes a uh, beautiful uh, imagination in the mind of Nicholas. 
the collection of all these items makes it a superb expedition for him now this is like a journey this is like a imaginative journey for nicholas rather than going to the sands at jagborough so this is the conflict because the conflict uh, happens when nicholas enters into the lumber room now we are at the climax climax means the turning point or the place where the conflict is happening uh, a turning is happening in the conflict now the conflict we saw while the aunt was on watch to the gooseberry garden whether this uh, nicholas will enter to the gooseberry garden but we saw how nicholas entered to the lumber room now both of them are in two different places the aunt is in the gooseberry garden and nicholas is in the lumber room the climax is while nicholas is admiring the coloring of the mandarin duck the voice of his aunt comes from the gooseberry garden she has slipped into the rainwater tank and cannot get out she commands the boy to bring her the ladder and he ignores it saying that it may be the sound of the evil one the aunt realizes that her punishment has boomeranged on her now what happened is the climax occurs when the aunt fall, uh, fell down to the rainwater tank luckily there was no water in the rainwater tank but she could not come out as this uh, the walls were slippery so when uh, aunt called out nicholas to come nicholas did not go telling that my aunt has forbidden me to enter to the gooseberry garden now the aunt is telling come i am the aunt but he is telling no you are not the aunt you are the evil one who is trying to uh, force me to do unnecessary things though he knows this is the aunt he is treating aunt with her own words so that is why he is telling you are the evil one and he uh, refuses to help her and then goes away so only the kitchen maid comes there to uh, help the aunt that is also after 20 minutes so the aunt now realizes that her punishment has come back to her it has boomeranged on to her so that is the climax of the short story the lumber room the resolution or the final result of this short story the furious aunt maintains the frozen silence of one who has suffered undignified detention in a rainwater tank for 35 minutes now we see how at the end no not like the other days aunt is not punishing uh, nicholas but she is remaining silent because she has suffered 35 minutes within that uh, rain water tank so she is not in a mood to punish or to talk with anyone and on the other hand nicholas is also silent in the absorption of an enchanting picture of a hunter and a stag because he was thinking more of that tapestry that he had seen of a hunter and a stag now he is thinking about that tapestry that is why he is silent so that is the resolution of the short story both the characters the aunt and nicholas are being silent in the short story the lumber room now let us see about the character nicholas he is the main character and the protagonist of the story everything he does is about testing the limits of authority nicholas makes his aunt furious because her punishments has no power over his lively curious and imaginative nature now we see how imaginative this uh, little child is when he went into the lumber room he was observing all the things that are considered as invaluable and uh, not up to the uh, standard of use as by the adults are being kept in the lumber room so these things are much valued and much uh, more appreciated by the child nicholas so that we can see that, that through his imaginative power and also nicholas being alone in the house discovers a world of pure freedom and joy in the lumber room though the aunt expected that nicholas will go to the uh, gooseberry garden he did not go there he had other plans so he enjoyed a pure freedom inside the lumber room the story ends with nicholas in disgrace as usual now that also he was in disgrace because uh, he did not help the aunt and he did something anything something unnecessary but completely untroubled by it as he silently revels in his private free world of imagination but he was not troubled by the punishment that he has already got because he is in his own own world of free uh, imagination and also we can tell that this child is a mischievous and an imaginative boy so that is about the character nicholas
the antagonist or the second main character in our short story that means like the enemy the aunt is a wet blanket and a spoil spot she is an unimaginative self proclaimed adult who demonstrates a very negative attitude towards children now we see how she treated the children okay and how he treated nicholas and how she did not listen to the little kids she has a habit of devising a treat for the children for the sole purpose of excluding one or all of them as a punishment now if one did a punishment that one is excluded and the others are going or giving some treats to them and if all are being excluded or if all has done a wrong thing uh, together all are being uh, excluded and she is telling about some important thing that will happen in the future so that is her habit she does this in order to assert her authority now she she does this to demand her authority she wants to show that she is in power she often does not listen to the children when they tell her things especially important things a small minded woman of few ideas with immense powers of concentration now we saw how she was very much keen and concentrating whether Uh, nicholas will enter to the gooseberry garden so she has a immense power of concentration but she is small minded that is why she got into trouble at the end of the day and losing to the little boy nicholas so these are the characteristics that you can find through the character the antagonist that means the aunt in the short story the lumber room now this one i have given for specially for to get to a better idea about the characters here i have divided two uh, columns which give you about the character comparison of the protagonist nicholas and the antagonist the aunt nicholas if we consider is a broad minded and full of ideas but the aunt is a small minded woman of very few ideas that means she does not have a set of ideas only very few ideas are there with her then nicholas have a huge power of imagination where we see aunt does not have a no power at least actually no power of imagination but this uh, this character uh, characteristics stubbornness we can see in both nicholas as well as aunt both are very stubborn nicholas acts against the authority of the aunt and aunt spreads her authority while aunt is spreading her authority nicholas is trying to act against the authority of the aunt nicholas rest, uh, though restricted and oppressed by the adult control we see how nicholas is restricted and oppressed by the adult control that means the aunt is controlling and restricting many things from nicholas but aunt she considers her to be the superior as they are wiser and better people all the wise and better people so she is considering herself as a superior that is why she is restricting and oppressing the child nicholas so these is uh, these are the some characteristics where we can compare the characters nicholas and the aunt let us focus on the techniques that are being used in this short story the lumber room if we consider about the narration technique or the point of view we can see that the writer has used third person narration technique because the writer is not involved in the short story he is an outsider who is narrating us the story so that is third person narration then there is a chronological order in the plot that means all the incidents are happening and they are related to uh, the uh, previous incident so it shows describing when events happened as they relate time most probably it's describing in a timeline and also uses a large variety of epithets to highlight the child's world and the adult's world an epithet means a phrase which is describing a quality so now here we see epithets such as grim chuckle unknown land frivolous ground so these are some epithets used to show the child's world as well as the adult's world then there are use of metaphors also in this uh, short story a circus of unrivaled merit and uncounted elephants and also some rhetorical questions are also there but did the huntsman see what nicholas saw that means uh, rhetorical question means the writer is providing a question but not expecting an answer so these are the techniques not uh, many techniques but these are the techniques that are used they are in the short story the lumber room now 
you all know after we do a poem or a short story we should find the message or the key things that the writer or the author has told the reader now these are known as the themes now in this short story we can find many themes that are based with the children and the adult one of the themes is the difference between the adults world and the world of children so that means basically the theme of generational gap we can see the differences between the adults world that means the world of the aunt and also the world of children uh, nicholas bobby and the other children then the another theme is children may be more innovative than the adults now we saw how that uh, old and dusty things that were thrown inside the lumber room were much valued and much treasured by nicholas so we can see how innovative they are than the adults the adults must be very careful in punishing the children so that is also very clearly shown now though nicholas was in disgrace he enjoyed a pure world of freedom on that day because he was able he was able to enter to the lumber room and he uh, so the adults must be very careful in giving punishments to the children another theme is stupidity moral degradation hypocrisy and ambition boomerang on the person who emits them in a hostile manner now we saw how these things are Uh, shown by the character of the aunt and how everything boomeranged on her at the end of the short story so these are the themes or the key messages that the writer hector hugh munro wants to convey to the reader we have come to the end and before the end we have a set of questions i have included five questions which you should answer and which you should try to answer and hopefully i am sure you all can answer these questions as you have gone through the video first question how does saki conveys the message that sometimes the children can be more intelligent than the adults prove your answer with examples from the short story while you are proving proving this answer you have to provide examples where the intelligence of the children can be seen more than the adult do you sympathize on the character of aunt who is trying to uphold the traditional values of the adult world now that also you have discussed whether the aunt is uh, whether you all are sympathizing on the aunt the other one is why did the aunt decides to send the other children to jagbara so what is the reason behind sending the other children to jagbara while leaving nicholas in in the house how does nicholas spend time when he is in the lumber room now you have to discuss how is he behaving how is he moving on with the things that he is finding in the lumber room so you have to explain that then right then the last question is how is nicholas more clever than his aunt so that also you have to prove why we consider nicholas to be more clever than the aunt so these are the five questions that you can find and you can uh, really nicely write an answer for these questions as you have gone through the video of the lumber room now we have come to the end of our presentation and i hope you all have gained more than enough information for you to write an appreciation on the short story the lumber room and i hope you will be answering the questions which are also provided in the question slide so have a nice day and thank you for going through the video